Hey Battles, welcome back to my channel. My name is Miss Bohemian Goddess. For those who don't know me, I have been documenting my journey from Dallas, Texas, all the way here to Accra, Ghana. And now that I'm here, I have started a business called Truth Check Solution, which is based off of me getting scammed a year ago. So what we do is we help diasporas purchase land and property here, whether it's real estate, whether it's an apartment, a house or a land, and we verify that for you before you make that purchase. So that is what we do. Now, this conversation today is about my money. For those who have watched my previous video where I got scammed, I have an update and <laughs> boy, an update I have for you guys. So let's talk about what's going on about me getting my 3000 USD back. Alex, Epps, take a look inside your heart. Is there any room for me? I won't have to hold my breath till you get down on one knee because you only want to hold Welcome back, Battles. So, <laughs> let's talk. So, you guys already know that I had tried to purchase a townhome last year, August sometime. And this company have basically stolen my money. Uh, sold me a property that has not been touched in years. So now that I'm here, a lot of you have said to me, you know, go to the police, go to police, go to police. And I thought it was going to be a waste of time. But long and behold, did I know that I took you guys up on what you guys said. So I took your advice and I went to the police. So back in May, I went ahead and filed a complaint against my realtor, who I initially thought was behind my money being stolen, or I should say frauded or scammed. Now, although she is wrong for selling me a piece of property, knowing that this company has not touched that land in forever in a day, but at the same time, you know, uh, she did pay them my money. I saw the receipt that shows that the company had the money that I paid for the reservations. Now, so I went ahead and I made a complaint with the police and then they went ahead and uh, contact both the owner of the, of the property as well as the realtor. Now, the owner of the property is called Net36 Vista. And if anybody is dealing with that company, I suggest you try your best to find an attorney um, so that you can get your money back, okay? And you can also book a consult with an attorney on Two Check Solutions if you need help. Now, I went ahead and filed that complaint. In the midst of me filing that complaint, I have been trying to get my money back. I have went to the property several times um, and they're telling me that the owner or their boss was not available. So next, I went ahead and took them to court. So we had issued them out a subpoena that they had to show up to court. And that was in August 27th was the court date. And they got the subpoena about a week prior. So that's when I finally spoke to the owner, okay, which is Ben Yardy. Okay, I finally spoke to him. He called me out of the blue finally because I've been reaching, calling, calling, calling. He don't answer the phone or anything. Now, let me let me pedal back a little bit. We first spoke to Mr. Yardy, I want to say back in July, and he promised to pay me the money the following week. He took my bank account information and everything. He even gave me his number. From July to now, you know, I have been calling Mr. Yardy and Mr. Yardy was refusing to answer my phone. Even up to now, like if I call, he won't answer. But ever since he got the subpoena, that's when he finally returned my call. So when he returned my call, he begged me to wait until the beginning of the first week of September for him to pay me the money. First week of September came, that didn't happen. But I still went to court on the 27th of last month. 
okay? Which at that time, since neither uh, Mr. Yardy or the realtor showed up, they end up getting a warrant for their arrest. So the judge granted me to get a warrant for my, I mean, for their arrest. So Mr. Yardy thought that because he begged me to wait until the first week of September that I didn't show up to court, but I did. Okay. So that actually helped me along the way. So now I waited and then I end up um, having an emergency where I was out for like two weeks. So I couldn't really do anything. So in the time frame, I was calling to see, you know, if he's going to give me the money because when the first week came, he didn't give me the money. He didn't answer my call. So he actually ended up calling the detective. The detective called me and told me, he said that I can come you know, on Friday, which is last week, Friday, last week, Friday came and <laughs> no money again. So he told me I'm going to show up again on Tuesday of this week. Okay. I showed up on Tuesday. I get there. His assistant decided to tell me that I must fill out a form. And once I fill out the form, then they would take seven days for them to process and give me my money. And I'm just like, why? When your boss told me to come here to pick up the money. I didn't have a problem filling out the form, but I wasn't filling out that form unless you see the money was there. And on that form, it did state that they can take any fees out of that money as they choose. Okay, so I wasn't about to sign that form without making sure I was going to get my full refund back. So that came Tuesday. We had a big old fiasco in there. Uh, the boss didn't want to answer my call. I'm calling, calling to let him know like I'm here at his office. He told me to come and he hasn't, there's no money here. Nobody knows what's going on. That's another thing. The receptions don't know what's going on. The assistant don't know what's going on. The no one knows what's going on, but he's telling me to come up to Net 36 Vista in Laboni and no one knows what's going on. So I went up there by myself on Tuesday. So after they decided that, you know, they didn't want to pay me and the assistant called him and then he finally answered the phone for him and them two were talking in tree, of course, I need to learn tree guys. I really do. So anyway, they were talking in tree and then he asked to speak to me and he had an attitude. This man had an attitude and said, did I give him the money? Did you pay me the money? You know, I, I don't have to give you the money and all this stuff. I'm just telling you to come up here to fill the form out. And then I can go with my team to see if they can refund me my money back. So when he said that, oh, all, all, <laughs> all strings was broken. Okay. Everything was off limits at this point. I didn't care who you were. So now I'm loud and belligerent in this man office because now he's playing me, you know, he's staggering on time and he's just wasting my time because mind you, we talking about May that I have been pursuing this. On top of that, this happened last year. So literally we're going to be one year, one month as of right now that I've been trying to get my money back. So now you're trying to tell me, oh, did I pay you the money? The question is not, did I give you the money? The, the question is, did you receive my money? And the answer is yes, because I have a receipt that the realtor paid you my money on my behalf. So now they're trying to make it seem like I didn't pay them the money. I need to go to the realtor to get my money. That makes no sense. But anywho, so I told him, don't worry, I'll come back with the police. Long did he know that I had a warrant for his arrest. So we came back on Wednesday. Wednesday came, we showed up, no one was at the office. I knew that was going to happen because I told him I was coming back with the police. So nobody's at the office. We sat there and we waited for like an hour and a half. And the detective called him and called him. And he finally answered the detective call. He decided to tell the detective on me as if the detective was supposed to do something to me anyways. But that I was in his office and I was yelling and I ripped up the paper and all this stuff. Sure did. And I'll do it again. Um, and all this stuff. And the detective just smiling because he already know why I ripped up the paper. Okay. Because we already had the discussion. So the detective told him, like, you told her to come, and she was frustrated because when she got here, you didn't have the money. So, but you want her to fill out the form. So he said, we'll fill out the form as long as you have the money. Now, he said, okay, fine. We must come on Thursday. Thursday come. Come on Thursday at 2 p.m. All right. So now let's rewind. So that day, the detective and I, when we first met him, we met at a different office, but we couldn't remember where the office was, but we knew it was close 
to the location where the um, where the office actually um, is. Okay, so we was driving and we decided to look for the office and we found the office. So we saw the office and then we drove around. And as we drove around, because it's literally a one way, it's like a U, you go back out. So you come on the main road, you come in and then you have to go all the way around and come back out to the main road. So it's a one way. But I was in a police car. So we showed up and the detective was like, okay, you know what? Let's go back and ping the location so that if we need to come here, we'll know exactly how to come here. We can come here straight. So they did a U-turn on a one way and came back around to the office that we found, the second office. And as we're pinging it, we decide to drive. And here comes this guy coming from a cut somewhere further down from the office, like basically closer to the main road. So the detective said, is that him? And I was like, it didn't look like him. But then when he turned around, I was like, I think it is him. I, he just looked a little stumpy. You know, it just looked different. He looked darker, even though he was a red bone guy. So he looked like he was a bit darker and he was a little stumpy, you know. So I was like, I think that's him. But the guy keep looking back, keep looking back, keep looking back. So I said, no, 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 it is him because he keep looking back at the police. So when we were doing the U-turn to come back on the road, that man took off running. He took off running. By the time we got to the road, he was nowhere in sight. So we went to the building. We went to the bu building. He's inside the building telling the security guard not to let us in. What? I don't know where they do that at. But anyways... So the security guard came out and the detective showed him a subpoena for an arrest. So they had to let him in. They came in and he's running, okay, running somewhere inside. I stayed outside. I'm seeing all the detective and the police going inside. They're coming back out. They're coming around the building trying to find him. They asked that he came out. I was like, no, he did not come out. So I would say about 30 minutes go by. I hear some, you know, people yelling, yelling, yelling. So I'm thinking that they got him come to find out. They saw him hop over this wall, but there was a lady who would not let them go through. So they were arguing back and forth. So then I saw the assistant run to the front and ask an Uber driver to meet him somewhere. He just pointed around somewhere. So I'm calling the police and detective to come, come, come. I'm like, the assistant is here and he's telling someone to go around to pick him. And he's talking on the phone and he's walking real fast. So we go, we get in the car, all of us hopped inside the car. You guys can see the video, honey. We were just speeding around, baby. I thought <laughs> I, thought I was in, on some TV show, the way how they were just zooming in and out of the traffic. But anyway, so we got around. So we got inside the truck and we drove around. And I didn't see nobody, but I remember the car that he told to come and meet him around. I said, they're in that car. So I'm looking in the car and there's three heads in the car, okay? So the police goes and cut them off. Then it was only two. So I'm like, he's laying down inside there. I'm telling you, he's inside there. He's laying down. So they went to pull over, you know, in front and then let them come. But instead, they shoot around and made a left turn instead of making a right turn to us. So they shoot around and made a left turn. The police turn back around and then we go and follow them. And now it was two cars between us. We're following them. So at this point, the police were like, you know something? We're not going to chase them. We're going to get uh, MTN to give us his location and we're just going to arrest him at his house okay so i was like okay no problem i'm not worried about it we good so i have another court date on september 29th okay so i'm like when we arrest him he stays in jail until the 29th till we show up to court so here comes now thursday okay i asked i called the detective i'm saying hey detective uh, are we going to go back out there again today? He was like, no, you know, we're going to wait until Tuesday because Monday is a holiday here in Ghana. So I said, okay, cool. No problem. I'm going to say about 30 minutes later, detective called laughing saying, hey, your boy called saying that you must come at two o'clock to get the money. And I said, are you sure I'm coming to get my money or I'm just coming again to fill out a form? He's like, no, you're going to have your money. They're going to write you out a check and you can fill the form out. That's what we'll do. I said, okay. So we round up the police again, round up the detective, and now we go. But this time we let the police sit back and just detective and I, we went inside the building. So just in case they act fool, then the police will be already in the car just in case you try to run or something. They already had a whole game plan for this man. So we get there and um, I go inside. The lady told me, now let me go back. We asked the lady, do she know where the other office is? We asked her this 
on Tuesday. She said, no, she don't know. I mean, on Wednesday, she said, no, she don't know where the other office is. Nobody knows nothing. I said, okay, cool. So now Thursday, I kind of pick up my money, right? She says, oh, the detective acts, you know, we're here to see Yard. He's like, she's like, oh, he's not here. So they was like, call him because he told us to come. He should know that we're coming here at two o'clock. Now, mind y'all was late. I got there at three. Oh, well, he had us waiting an hour and a half the first time I met him. So I didn't care. I had things to do. He was waiting. So she called him. He answered and said that someone was going to come and tend to us. So they did. Long and behold, it's his assistant. Same one who I ripped up the paper with, you know, because I wasn't about to sign nothing. Okay, so we get there. We go inside. They ask me, you know, what rate I want. And then um, I told them what my bank rate was at the time. And then um, they wrote me a check equivalent to 3000 USD in Ghana CDs, which I was fine with. I'm okay with it as long as it's the same amount. Um, battles is a long day today, but it's a happy day. I got my money. I got my money from the company that frauded me. The police came in and we got my money. $3,000 is back in my hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, to all praises to the Almighty and to my ancestors. Listen, you stay true to what it is, okay? You don't give up. I don't care what the rules is here in Ghana, what they say, you fight for it. And you make sure you get good connections with the police department because, baby, let me tell you, I'll tell you all guys all about it. Stay tuned. Um, so I signed a little form and they gave me a check. Now, let's hope, hopefully by I post this video that the check don't bounce. <laughs> Be bouncing somewhere else and I don't get my money. So that is like a great, 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 great thing right now. I am so excited that I got my money back. Um, but right now it's deposited in my bank account. And um, I'm waiting for it to clear. So hopefully by Tuesday, um, September 24th, that it will be ready. I think Tuesday, September 24th. Don't correct me down. It don't matter as long as it's Tuesday, okay? But yeah, so let's hope that I get my money in my bank account. I got the check. I deposited same day on Thursday. <laughs> like, I need my money. I'm going to play no games with this man. But yeah, guys. So the police helped me to get my money. Can you believe that? Like I had a detective, I had police all over the place with me. Every time I was going somewhere to see him, I had a detective, you know, to the point where at this point I had a chauffeur. Anywhere I went, they were going with me, <laughs> you know. So yeah, uh, guys, so with that being said, you know, the the stereotype, or should I say the myth that Ghana police don't help you unless you dash them something. As for me, nobody asked for nothing and nobody even, even uttered a word or made me feel like I'm supposed to give them something. Now, as a disclaimer, I am going to because, you know, they didn't have to add extra people to help me so i am going to show my appreciation by giving a token but no one asked me for anything even when i got my money you know they wanted me to try to deposit it as soon as possible but which at the same time they told me that if you see i deposit it and if i deposit it and the, it bounced then now we will basically be going after the whole company and not just him so I don't think he's going to bounce this check because again, the 29th, I have court. So if this check bounce on Tuesday, then uh, his butt's gonna really be in trouble by the 29th if you see it bounce. So guys, I just wanted to give you guys an update on my good news that I did got my money back for the $3,000 that I lost back last year. And for those who are with net 36 Vista. Um, I'm so sorry. I just hope that you guys contact a uh, police station so you can make your report. Um, and you need to come here. You really do. They're taking advantage of the fact that you're there, you know, and that is the whole reason for my business. Okay. You can trust Truth Check Solutions where I can definitely help you buy verified land 
and real estate here in Ghana, where you don't have to worry about, is this person scamming you? If you do have something that you want to purchase, you can contact us and book a site visit and we can go and check it out for you on your behalf, send you pictures, send you updates of what's going on so that you can make a, uh, a conscious decision when you're making a purchase. You have to do your due diligence before you spend your money because at the end of the day, we cannot always blame the person who scammed us if we didn't do our due diligence in the first place. And that's why I'm not upset about losing my 3000 because I should have did my due diligence first. But something in me told me to show up, so I did. I spent that money, okay? I spent that 1800 flight to get here before I made that $20,000 down payment on this place. So technically I was happy that I spent that 1800 because I saved $20,000 because had I gave them this 3000 reservation and then 30 days later I gave them that 20% which was $20,000 I would have been out of $23,000. So had I had someone boots on ground that was charging whatever amount they wanted is still cheaper than $23,000, okay? then I would have saved that money and I would have been able to see like, okay, oh my God, yeah, I'm glad that I did this because now I saved myself my money, right? So that's what Truth Check Solution is all about, okay? So I'm telling you guys all the time, do your research. You don't have to come to me. There are so many people on this platform that I'm sure that you can trust. Let me take it back. <laughs> Because I did hear some stories about people on here that are Americans that are scamming Americans, and I hate to say it. It's just so sad and sickening, you know, that you have to come here and you need to figure out a way to make money. So the only way you can do it is by scamming your own people, right? And that's sad, but it happens. So you just have to trust, pray, guide yourself to make sure you're doing the right decision, okay? So once again, like I always tell you guys what's for you no one can take it away not even yourself so until next time bye